Welcome back to another video of me trying to get sub 20 and slowly getting closer, but still not getting sub 20. Welcome to episode 16, guys. Again, leave your comments, your Q&A comments down below, and I'll get to answering them in a couple episodes. I'm a little bit behind, but right now I'm answering questions from episode 13. I haven't gotten a ton so far, but I've got six really good questions. So let's go ahead and get into it. Poly Trey Master first says, after sub 20, will you continue? Please do. I, okay, I've said this a couple times. This series gets hardly any views compared to anything else on my channel, but you guys who do watch it love it. So I will continue uh, posting these videos to the best of my ability. Uh, my life's about to pick up drastically in the next couple months here. So I'm going to have less time to dedicate to YouTube, but I will do my best to continue all of the series on this channel and continue those daily shorts. He also asks, what camera are you using? Because whenever I record for my friends, uh, my hand looks really weird. He uses an iPhone camera. Uh, okay. So I guess at the start of my YouTube channel, I actually used an iPhone camera as well. I switched to a DSLR 4K 60 frame a second camera and it looks the exact same. So here's my little tip here. All of the iPhones made in like the last five or six years records 4K 60 frames a second just fine. Um, and the iPhones before that 1080p 60 frames a second, you really can't tell the difference. But here's the big game changer. I bought two like Amazon lights for like $25 on, on Amazon. I already said that. Um, those were an absolute game changer because they made the camera quality look so much better. So I guess maybe you can't afford the lights. Maybe you can, maybe this goes for any YouTuber out there, but I mean, using any type of lighting, especially in like Rubik's cube videos will drastically improve the quality of your video and make it look a lot higher resolution. So I think less of the camera is what you need to worry about and more of how do I get good lighting? Um, also check your camera settings because maybe there's some settings that need to be tweaked um, to make it look better. But I don't know too much about iPhones or iPhone cameras. So maybe that's another tutorial you need to watch on YouTube. Third question here from the same guy says, from yourselves, I'm pretty sure you have really good F2L compared to most cubers at the 20 range. Your look ahead is really good. So how did you develop that? If you said you practice, when did you get the time in and only once per day or once per week for hobbies is because how long you've been cubing for. Um, okay, so I think I'm understanding this correctly. Uh, I cube like once a week just to film these videos. I work full time, so I don't have a lot of time outside of making, I guess, work stuff happen. So I don't have a lot of time to practice cubing, which is unfortunate, but these videos give me a great like 20, 30 minutes to practice cubing, which is why I'm, I'm improving so slowly, but um, I am improving. So once a week for 20 or 30 minutes is when I practice uh, my F2L look ahead. I don't think it's that good, but I appreciate you for saying that. It usually takes me till around 10 to 12 seconds into the solve before I complete F2L. Um, I think my look ahead's all right, but I think I just developed it from practicing and like experimenting on my own. I mean, not, not timing solves at all, but I mean, sitting there and like looking, okay, if I have this case, what kind of moves can I do to, uh, you know, solve it uh, quickly and efficiently um, and just kind of trying to improve from there. I don't know too much about improving F2L. I know Perm's got a couple good videos, but if you guys have any tips for this guy in the comments, go ahead and put them down there and tag him so he knows, I guess, how to improve F2L. Next question from Bloxy Sucks at Roblox. He says, do you have any recommendations on how to remove double-sided tape on a cube? His classmates ruined his main by putting double-sided tape on it. Um, double-sided tape is extremely, extremely sticky from what I know. It all depends. Do you have a stickerless or a stickered cube? For stickerless cubes, I'd say get some acetone. I mean, rip the tape off and then use some acetone on like a Q-tip to um, like remove the adhesive gump from your cube, but make sure to wipe it off really quickly whenever you're done because acetone does melt the pieces if you leave it on there long enough. So, 
I mean, use that to get the adhesive off and then um, make sure you wipe your cube really good. If it's a stickered cube, that might be a different story. You might have to just really slowly remove the tape and use some kind of like tweezer to hold your stickers onto it. And then same deal, use acetone to remove the gump from the pieces, but be very, very careful with that. Next question from user and then a lot of uh, letters and characters. He says, if I get a lot of 19 and 18 second solves, but I still get 21 every four solves, do I count myself as sub 20? You know, there's not really a good way to count that. I mean, I get quite a few solves under sub 20, but the way I look at it is when I feel like I'm ready, I'm gonna do an average of 100 and see if I can get sub 20 for that full average. And I mean no cheating, no setting up solves, just do the CS timer scrambles. And if you do an average of 100 and you get sub 20, I'd say it's official. If not, like for me, I'm just doing these averages of 12 to kind of see where I sit. So, you know, I think the average of 100 is a really good test for that. And I was really confused here because my average after my 11th solve was like 19 point something seconds. And then I got a 17 second solve and my average of 12 went up on my 12th solve. I'm unsure how that worked. I think that should have been a sub 20 average, but I'm not sure. So 20.63 this time around. So we are actually getting faster. We are so close to that sub 20 range. But for the little challenge of the day here, I'm going to be scrambling and solving my pin cube, which that means we only have time for one more question once we reach the challenge. So that one cuber 025 says, I bet by next year you'll be doing a road to sub 10 vid. I sure hope so. Also, how do you recommend learning CFOP to a cuber who does beginner methods still? So I'm guessing if you're doing the beginner method, you're doing two look OLL and PLL um, and still doing the beginner method to solve F2L. I think one thing that's really important is just watching a lot of tutorials on how to do F2L. It's something that you just kind of learn how to do. You don't really memorize algorithms, but watching these tutorials should help you a lot and just kind of like learning the moves and learning how to pair up pieces, um, you know, without using that beginner method or any of those algorithms. Next, go ahead and learn PLL first and just work your way through that. For me, I've only got two algorithms left until I've learned full PLL. And then next, uh, go to OLL and learn all of the cases that you can, which may be hard, but it's totally doable. With that being said, I appreciate y'all for watching. Comment checkerboard, so I know you made it to the end. Peace. Peace.